Hello everyone and welcome to another episode on the introduction to world religions. Today we'll take a look at Judaism which is one of the world's oldest monotheistic religion. And we see that being the world's oldest monotheistic religion, it emphasizes the belief in one unique God. And we see that this is a God that is deeply concerned with humanity and its actions. And therefore we see that this deep commitment to a singular God as well as the ethical responsibility that is there to live according to the will of God is something which is very special to Judaism. Here we see that this whole ethical responsibility to live according to the will of God, to follow the commands, it has in a way earned Judaism the designation of what we call as an ethical monotheism. Now, what does this mean? This means that this belief system emphasizes not only the existence of one God, that is monotheism, but also the moral obligations that people must uphold in their relationship with him. So, the belief in one God and at the same time you need to respect and follow all the commandments, all the obligations that are there to remain in this relationship with God. So, let's take a look at certain key beliefs that we find in Judaism. And first and foremost, uh, we will see that comes on the list is monotheism, that is belief in one God. So, Judaism will teach us that God is one and unique. And therefore, this makes it different from other polytheistic traditions which believe in the existence of many gods. So, here in Judaism, we see that God is not only the creator of the universe, but we see that God is also actively engaged in the moral and ethical conduct of both the individuals as well as the community. Now, God is also known for his concern for humanity. And in this way, God is seen both as just as well as merciful. And in a way, people are accountable for their actions. At the same time, we see that God also provides guidance through his commandments and these in a way are meant to help the people to lead a good life and come closer to him. So in this way he is not only just and merciful, he also makes sure that people are given guidance so that they can follow the commandments and in a way come closer to him. Next, Judaism also believes in the centrality of the Torah. So we see that for them the Torah is very, very important. Now, what is the Torah? The Torah is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. And 
and this in a way defines much of jewish life and practice why because we see that the torah is seen as god's direct revelation to humanity and in a way we see that following the teachings of the torah is considered to be very important so adherence to the teachings of the torah is considered as essential for living a life that is pleasing to god now let's take a look at the historical overview of judaism now judaism's origins in a way can be traced back to the ancient people of israel and juda and here we see that the early conceptions of the relationship between god and the hebrew people takes place now important to the whole history of judaism is the figure of abraham who is regarded as the first patriarch of the jewish people now we see that abraham comes from haran in mesopotamia and we see that he entered into a covenant with god and in this way we see that god promised that his descendants would become a great nation and they would also inherit the land of israel but on the condition that they should worship god and follow his commandments now the covenant between god and the hebrew people is seen as a foundation of jewish history and identity and in this way we see that abraham's son isaac as well as isaac's son jacob they continued the covenant now jacob had in a way 12 sons and these 12 sons become progenitors of the 12 tribes of israel and each of them play an important role in the formation of the nation of israel now we see that throughout the history of judaism 
and in the jewish narrative there are various events that we find so you have events such as the creation then you also have the expulsion of adam and eve from the garden then you also have the great flood and you also have the tower of babel now we we see that these are kind of key milestones in humanity's relationship with god now the jewish understanding of these stories in a way emphasizes the human struggle to align with the will of god and at the same time of the ongoing covenant between god and his people now we see that in jewish history there are two groups of people which stand out or which are very notable and these are the pharisees and the sadducees now both of them were significant during the second temple period but we see that they had different views on jewish law and jewish tradition now when we look at the pharisees we see that they believed in the oral torah uh, which was an interpretative tradition that was passed down to them they also believed the written torah now we see that they also emphasized religious piety and the importance of studying and also interpreting the torah for everyday life and in this way we see that they also believed in concepts like the resurrection of the dead now the sadducees on the other hand they represented the priestly and the aristocratic classes and in a way they rejected the oral torah they focused only on the written law and in this way they in a way tend to have a more literal interpretation of the scriptures and they deny beliefs in the resurrection and the afterlife so let's break this down and take a look at the pharisees and the sadducees with regards to their beliefs social status and their practices so when it comes to the pharisees we see that the pharisees in a way accept both the written as well as the oral torah they also believed in the resurrection of the dead they also believed in angels and uh, spirits they also in a way emphasized religious piety and the importance of studying as well as interpreting the torah for everyday life now when it comes to the social status we see that they generally represented the common people and they were in a way also more accessible and they were in a way 
involved in the daily lives of the Jewish communities. Now, when we look at the practices, we see that they focused on synagogue worship, and as well as personal piety. They also developed extensive interpretations and applications of the law in order to guide daily living. So you also see that they developed interpretations as well as applications of the laws to guide the people. Now let's take a look at the Sadducees. Now the Sadducees, they accept the written Torah and they reject the oral Torah. So they also deny the resurrection of the dead and angels and spirits. So we see that they had a more literal interpretation of the scriptures. Now, when it comes to the social status, we see that they represented the priestly as well as the aristocratic classes. And they also had significant poli political power and also aligned with ruling authorities very often. When it comes to practices, we see that they focused more on temple worship as well as the sacrificial system. And their religious duties were more centered on the temple and its rituals. Now, let's take a look at the obedience to the Torah. Now, for the Jews, the obedience to the Torah was something that was very important. And in a way, following the commands or following the commandments was supposed to liberate the people by providing them with a moral and ethical framework for life. Now, we see that obedience also establishes equality as all people 
a subject to same laws and expectations before god now in a way we see that the torah contains laws that dictate not only religious practices but they also contain laws with regards to social justice personal conduct as well as community obligation so it not only involves things that are there only for worship or for practice but also in a way the all round development all round ethical formation of the person so when we look at the social structure and the family life okay we see that the family was considered to be the smallest unit and family was patriarchal in nature and we see that the members were related by bonds of marriage or kinship and obviously we see that the father was a very important figure so they were ruled by the authority of the father so a uh, family generally consisted of father mother sons and daughters brothers sisters grandparents relatives even concubines servants so in a way we see that the family was quite big and apart from this we see that solidarity was maintained around the father and at the same time we see that retributive justice was applied in terms of corporate personality uh another notable feature is that they encouraged big families and this was mainly for religious as well as economic reasons now the family functioned as a religious community preserving the traditions and passing it on through instructions and worships from one generation to another now the father was the central figure now we see that the mother also had special responsibilities the daughters had a subordinate uh, role and sons were of supreme importance why because they were the ones who were supposed to carry on the name of the family so in a way we see that there was corporate solidarity within the family especially there were responsibilities to protect the family's name and honor and therefore each member had to protect his uprightness of conduct so each member of the family had to do his part in order to keep up to the family name and also to keep up to the honor of the family now let's take a look at the social position of women so we see that women had a very little part in public life so we see that women were not noticed and they had to wear veils especially when they went house when they went out of their houses so in public they had to wear veils 
and in a way we see that it was forbidden to look at a married woman or even to greet her now the wife had to help her husband had to assist the husband in his profession and we see that uh, married women also helped their husbands in agricultural duties also now we see that women also participated in the synagogue and they also participated in special gatherings but at the same time we see that they only listened they did not teach nor preach they were not allowed to pronounce a blessing now when it comes to racial purity we see that at the time of christ jewish society placed a strong emphasis on maintaining racial and cultural purity and this was basically seen as a reflection of their covenantal relationship with god now the concept of being a pure israelite this was tied down to the idea that the jewish people were in a way uniquely chosen by god as his holy nation and therefore this status came with the obligation that yes they had to also now uphold the religious and the social laws which included strict regulations on marriages so let's take a look at some of the points with regards to racial purity so we see that first and foremost is maintaining purity through the marriages here we see that jews at the time believed that marriages with non israelites or those of questionable ancestry could compromise the purity of the jewish people hence in a way we see that uh, you could not marry you could not marry a non israelite as well as those of questionable ancestry and we see that they strictly avoided what was called as illegal marriages and therefore in a way we see that union with non jews or people who were not part of the covenantal community so therefore this illegal marriages would would include marriages 
with non jews and those outside of the covenantal relationship now these type of marriages were seen as a threat to the social and spiritual identity of israel as they could they were seen as a threat because they could introduce foreign beliefs customs and practices which were inconsistent with the torah next also you had something called as the legitimate ancestry now to be considered as a part of pure israel uh, we see that one had to be able to trace their lineage back to the 12 tribes of israel that means coming from the patriarch jacob now this ancestral purity was important not only for social status but also for religious participation now being able to prove one's israel descent was a marker of being included in the covenant that god had made with with abraham and his descendants so therefore if you are able to prove your lineage coming from the 12 tribes of israel then it was considered that yes you are included in the covenant that god made with abraham and his descendants now we see that at the same time there was this belief that israel was a god given nation in this way we see that it was believed that the people of israel had a kind of a divine mandate or a divine command to keep themselves distinct from other nations and this distinction had to be both culturally and religiously and therefore the idea of being set apart for god was seen as essential to fulfilling god's promises the promises that he had made to the jewish people and this also included the messianic hope of the age to come so in jewish thought this future age would bring about the full realization of the kingdom of god on earth and only those who were part of pure israel would experience the promise so only those part of pure israel could in a way experience the promise now next we'll take a look at this promise of the age to come so this age to come in a way means a future time of divine fulfillment 
and this is often associated in a way with the coming of the messiah and in this way we see that the messiah would restore israel and he would also establish peace justice and holiness now this promise was thought to be valid only for those who were pure israelites that means those who maintained their covenant with god those who followed the torah and those who kept their lineage intact and therefore being part of this future blessing was in a way tied to maintaining one's racial and religious identity as an israelite so friends this is all for today's episode we took a look at a few concepts and just introduced ourselves to judaism next time around we'll take a look at the divisions of the jewish society and also we'll take a look at the religious life of the jews so thank you and see you next time